Let me give you the next word, out, out. I, I know, <laughs> I, was, I was a young man and sometimes I, I would say and do things wrong and I, I remember a couple times my, my mom or my dad would say, out, <laughs> get, get out of the house. <laughs> you know, and, and, and often I, I, I see this picture though, uh, Abraham is in a, in a place, he's in the land of Ur and of uh, the Chaldeans and, and, and God hears God's voice. And I, I, I'm going to tell you that it wasn't just Abraham that heard God's voice. It was Abraham's father that actually heard his voice first. And they went a certain way and stopped because they had a tragedy in their, in their, in their life. You know, Abraham's uh, son, uh, 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 Abraham's brother, or, uh, or uh, his dad's son had passed away. And so they stopped. They stayed in the place because they had a tragedy. And, and I don't know, well, the Bible doesn't say, and I don't know, but maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Abraham's father was the one that received the, the promise or the call to go, okay? But, but, but Abraham heard the voice of God, and he said, go, get out, because where you're at is not where I want you to be, okay? And Abraham, who is the father of our faith, by the way, okay, he heard God's voice, and he did what? He got out. Right, he got he moved, he moved, and see, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you this morning. This is really going to get right up in your business a little bit. But what is it that God has asked you to get out of that you're still in this morning? I want to ask you that. What are you supposed to be getting out of that you're still in? What, what, when are you going to take the step? Hmm? You know, yesterday, or not yesterday, but last week, my wife she preached a very beautiful message. At the end of the message, she laid a chain on the floor, and she says, "When are you going to step over the line?" Because it's time for you to step over the line. It's time to begin to move. It's time to begin to move. It's time to get out of whatever you're in so that God can begin to use whatever he put in you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Woo, that's some good preaching right there. But it's time to move. It's time to move this morning. It's time to move this morning. It's time to move this morning. That's a good, that's a good message right there. You can give it to yourself in the morning when you get up and look in the mirror and you look at your beautiful eyes and you say, it's time. Because it's time, amen? It's time to listen to what God has already spoken. Because why would he keep speaking to somebody who don't listen? Think about that. If we don't listen, why would he, why would he, why would he keep talking to you? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I've been married a long time, and sometimes, I'm going to say it not happen very often because I'm a pretty good guy, but sometimes she will stop talking to me. And I like it because it's quiet in the house. But, some, but, but I'm going to tell you, that's not a good relationship. <laughs> and eventually, eventually, okay, we got to come back together and there has to be communication again. Amen? And if God is speaking to your life, why do you expect him to continue to bless you if you won't listen to what he has told you to do already? Amen? Amen. It's time to get out. It's time to get out. It's time to get out of stubbornness. It's time to get out of selfishness. It's time to get out of all of those things that hold you back. Get out. Hmm. You know what the problem is? This is the problem. We get comfortable in the little jail cell. <laughs> that's what happens. That's why, that's why I use the word fear, because faith is a substance that has set you free. Okay? It, it, there's, there's this beautiful picture. I'm, I'll, I'll show you this beautiful picture. I don't even know where it is. Oh, yes, I do. It's in Acts. It's in Acts 12, verse 14 through 16. It says, Peter's knocking on the door. He's, he's, he's like, and she opened the door. Not, she opened not the door for gladness, okay? Because the church was praying. They were praying. Peter, let Peter out. Let Peter out of jail. Peter, they're going to kill Peter. Let him out. Let him out. Let him out. And they were having, holding a prayer vigil. And they were, they were, they were like, pray, praying, praying, praying. And um, Peter's knocking at the door. He already been set free. And <laughs> I love this picture, though. And, and it, so she didn't open the door. She heard his, she, she knew it was Peter's voice. She, she, she didn't open the door. So she ran in and told, told everybody, Peter stood, is, is out there. And they said unto her, you're mad. You're crazy. Okay, you're crazy. Oh, these people of faith were, were praying for God to do something, and they were saying, you know, he's, and she's saying, he's, he's standing out the door right now. I heard his voice, and, and they're going, you're crazy, you're crazy. And, but she constantly affirmed him, and it was even so. And, and they said, it's just, a, it's just his angel. It's not really Peter. God wouldn't really intervene in our life. God's not really going to answer our prayer, but we're going to pray anyways. Why are we praying? Why are, we, why are we trusting God for situations that if, he, if we don't really believe he's going to do it? Oh, ye of little faith. And, but Peter kept knocking. He just kept on knocking. And finally, they went and opened the door and they were astonished. God actually answers prayer? 
Oh my goodness, God intervenes in the life of, of humankind. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is a church. This is a church that had just seen a great outpouring of God. They've seen miracles and miracles and all kinds of people. Peter preached one message, the first message, and 3,000 people came into the kingdom of God that one day. <laughs> the next day it was 2,000, I think. There was like a whole bunch of people that got saved and, and got all excited and everything. And then they began to ask God for things. Amen. And God delivers things. But, but <laughs> they're, like, they're astonished. They're, they're like, you're mad, you're crazy. But Peter kept knocking. What are you praying for this morning that is standing right in front of you? What is it that you've been asking God for? that he has already given you, but you're too afraid to step out of the prison of fear. Because you can never move forward unless you operate the faith that you already have. Faith is the substance this morning. It's the thing we hold that will move mountains in my life. It's the thing that I can use to move me from where I am to wherever it is he wants me to go. And I can trust that it's going to be better than where I am now. Amen. Do you agree with that? Or do you think that I am mad Am I crazy? See, because I'm not crazy. I, this morning, am a Christian. That's what a Christian looks like. Amen? It's time for the world to see a Christian stand up and be a Christian. Come on. Somebody's going to have to stand up and stop being afraid. Somebody's going to have to stand up and say, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. Somebody's going to have to stand up and say, you know what? I'm going to believe God for a financial breakthrough. Somebody's going to have to stand up and say, you know what? I believe that God can do things that I don't understand. I believe God will bring something about that I, I had no imagine. I couldn't imagine. I'll be astonished. I'll be like, what? Like, what? <laughs> That's from down south in Mississippi. I'm talking Mississippi now. Woo! <laughs> it's like I don't understand what they're saying, but what? I don't know. It must be. It must be excited about it. Woo! 